everybody. Welcome to our Mom Critiques Wild Bow, a proud member of the Doof Network. In this podcast, my sister and I force our mother to read Pale, Wild Bow's least gory work. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. And I'm their mom, and the girls got me hooked on this book. This episode, we are covering the second half of Arc 1, Lost for Words. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you guys again that we're having a fan art contest. Yay! <laughs> Pale Complexions! So, all about the other verse and theme is sisters. Well, or brothers. Siblings. <laughs> or non-binary <laughs> siblings. <laughs> yeah. I had a total brain mom- fog like moment and I was like, oh wait, it's not sisters. It's siblings. <laughs> I have a sister. Never mind. <laughs> well, I was hoping you'd make a joke of like, you can't do fan art of, you know, of your own two of us. us. Oh, well, no, of the two of us. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could, but I don't know if you'd I don't know if that's other anything. verse related enough. Yeah, I don't know if that quite counts. Tell you what, if you draw us and you make us like our own masks and stuff, oh. then we'll consider it. Yeah. <laughs> all right <laughs> um and yeah as another reminder and i guess information for mom who might not know if you're interested in participating in the fan art contest but you yourself don't want to submit anything um you can help select the winner um our patrons are the ones who will vote to select the winner and the runner-up of our contest so um if you want to become a patron so that you can vote and so that you can support us and all the cool stuff that we at doof media do you can go to patreon.com slash doofmedia and make your voice heard. You know, democracy, <laughs> except you have to pay to participate. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> Just like democracy. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's get started here. Um, so we're going to go over all the chapters we're going to be going through. So we're going to start with, we're basically doing 1.5 through... 1.x so i actually think it's 1.z my bad oh okay well great job on the typo malia (laughs) (laughs) i'm just like you know ron burgundy and anchorman i read what's on like you know the what do you whatever it's called my pregnancy brain's working overtime right now you read the script thing (laughs) the paper it's fine (laughs) the thing with words (laughs) <laughs> someone if someone types something i'm gonna read it okay that's just how it goes um all right so let's start with um 1.5 the trio visits john styles gains some tools and learns about his background in 1.6 after surviving their encounter with john lucy gets home she's very shaken up um tries to sleep but is visited by a nightmare and the next day the I'm trying to think of a good adjective, and I can't. The fucking class raker app results come back, and it causes turmoil. One period six extra, since you used a different descriptive term for the little dot thing. Um, Weird poster, which basically is the Hungry Choir poster, combining all you can eat and a sing-along. Also have the class raker results pop up. In... 1.7 1.7 Avery <laughs> plays basketball with her crush and the rest of her class um, and something freaky happens with her sight um, they then continue to investigate the choir, talk to Miss and receive some gifts from her I feel like I'm running out of things to use <laughs> um, let's see, google period synonyms Ooh. these aren't going to make sense I'm going to use it anyway let me see One lesson (laughs) eight (laughs) verona rebrands her lawnmower has an incredibly uncomfortable interaction with her dad and tells miss why she really wanted to awaken okay i'm gonna go with this i don't know if this is the right word in one patio (laughs) patio at least you're trying you guys are trying way too hard (laughs) in one (laughs) patio z (laughs) gabe makes a bad choice Uh. Oh, Malia, don't start. Gee. Don't laugh. <laughs> you can't stop. 
Huh. Well, because punct is German, and so I was like, okay, what is it in Spanish? And I was like, is it really just period with an O at the end? And like, I don't know, but that's what Google says. That's what Google says, and Google is always right, as we know. Oh, yeah. Um, we also have the 1.8. Um, uh, oh, I forgot to use my exciting word, but that's okay. Oh, crap. Um, Wait, no, you did. Oh, I messed up. Sorry. That's all right. We'll do the <laughs> one, like, black circle 8 extra um, which is images of what each caneteer prepared for the hungry choir confrontation um an online forum that gabe is pursuing the do's and don'ts of the hungry choir oh Um, perusing perusing yes just to let y'all know too um so i pulled up (laughs) you know synonyms for period of course like you know menstruation popped up as well hilariously it's saying a synonym for menstruation is the curse (laughs) <laughs> love it which is just really funny to me all right so that was a little bit of a hot mess but that's why you guys listen to us you don't want like a put together <laughs> podcast that's just boring you know mm-hmm. you don't want someone who like is organized and i mean maybe you do but then what do you, i don't know what you're doing listening to this but <laughs> <laughs> anyway um into into this i guess mom um uh, how did you like this part of the story? <laughs> wow. You're just going to just start right there, huh? Mm-hmm. I, I, <laughs> uh, well, see, unfortunately, the la- the part that's stuck in my head right now is that last chapter, which was the one I've been dreading for, for probably two months. You know, everybody was like, well, I, that's great. You like it. But is your mom going to be able to make it? past that chapter yeah i'm okay i'm okay i I mean i'm gonna make it i'm actually able to carry on and you know and i might even read a little bit more oh Uh, my gosh you know so yeah but it was it was yeah that was terrible i forgot what your question was jen but how how do you like like this part of the book yeah okay basically i Basically, I really like it and I'm into it and it's really interesting. I just wish the horrible parts weren't so horrible. So there. Mm. Well, on behalf of all the listeners and on behalf of me, congratulations, Mom. I am very proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, honey. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to know, like, yeah, let tell us about the Hungry Choir Ritual, Mom. Like, did you expect <sighs> this by the time you got to it? Was it worse than you thought it would be? Like, how was our buildup in relation to it? Did you think it was kind of cool in a fucked up way? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't think it was cool. I didn't like it. I And um, it wasn't worse than I thought, but it wasn't better. It was just very disturbing, very disturbing. And um, I mean, I'll never look at a choir and music again. This was a sing-along, you know, really? (laughs) That was a sing-along. That's so awful. And um, yeah, I, but I changed my mind. I started, remember how at first I thought for sure something with bad was going to happen to Charles. Oh yeah. And, um, and then I got it in my mind. I, I actually thought it would have been really cool if the really bad thing that happened is where the choir would just sing these disturbing songs over and over and off key and he would just go crazy. And I thought that's yeah. really awful, but that kind of makes sense. You know, it falls into place. I can see it happening, but it wasn't that. And then I was worried for a while that, no, it was going to be Verona returning back you know, a- after she went to Lucy's or wherever, and she's going to go back and knock on her dad's door and dad's not going to answer. And he, he's, will he will have shot himself or something horrible. And so I was like, I'm kind of glad it wasn't that. Um, but then I kept worrying about Gabe, you know, thought something bad, Gabe, you're just so, yeah, it, it was a little worse than I thought, but <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. anyway, yeah, it, it, it was sad and no, it was, surprising and disturbing so i'm curious as a nurse what did you think maybe was going to happen when you're reading like so the instructions on the website right it's like oh like take i don't remember all the words or what they all mean exactly but it was like oh make like eat and drink something like don't take certain things because they'll make you drowsy but like do take a thing to settle your stomach like all of those things when you were reading through it, were you just like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, nurse, my nursing background didn't help me too much. I've been confused <laughs> throughout most of this book. <laughs> yeah, they like, should have well, recommended some and, Zofran, and, her fun again. Yeah. I was like, an anti-emetic, you know? Okay. Yeah. I, I don't really, I just didn't, I kind of just cruised over it because I couldn't figure it out, you know? So, um, yeah, just couldn't figure it out. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, I guess to the both of you, I don't know what the words Jenny just said were, but what would you recommend someone take <laughs> before doing this ritual? <laughs> I, I'd well, say big time drugs. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah, that's just gonna forget the anti medic part. Just like yeah. take some like hallucinogens or something yeah, weird. Yeah, really. LSD you know, or something. Get your last, you know, something that you're not even going to know what's happening. Yeah. It's that's not the it's best. Just, thing. It's a bad trip, you know, and you yeah, just got to go really with it. Bad. And then you die. Yeah. And then you die. And then you die. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> oh my um, gosh. I was saying, um, Zofran and Finnergan, um, although I take I take back the Finnergan. Um, so basically they're both really good like anti-medic, like anti-nausea meds. Huh. Um Finnergan can make or does have the tendency to make you really sleepy. It is mm-hmm. uh, better um at you know killing off the nausea, but uh it does make you sleepy. So um Zofran probably be my drug of choice. <laughs> yeah. In terms of that, at least. <laughs> What about you, mom? Any old school or new school or you just sticking with the LSD? I I still think that's probably the best thing. Just get okay. some really. Fair enough. Yeah. The LSD yeah. and Pepto-Bismol. How's that? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's a combo. Smoke some pot beforehand, man. Just mellow yourself out a little bit. You know, sometimes yeah, but I then can... he'd want to eat more, you know, I, well, maybe that, well, good, though. That, that might work, right? That makes you more motivating to like. Actually, for I forgot about that for cancer patients and stuff. Yeah, they have them um, do that for their nausea. You got it, Jen. Exactly. Well, smoke for their nausea. I mean, can't smoke too much because then, like, you'll get you could get the um, what is it hyperemesis. Um, Yeah, yeah, if you smoke too. If you smoke too I much, don't know what that word means. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were looking at me like it what that could happen. And then I realized you don't know. What throwing up like crazy, Malia. Yeah, that's what it means. Throwing up like crazy. Hyper um, barfing. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. So it's like so marijuana can help quite a bit with nausea and with food cravings and things. But if you smoke too much, for some people, it can cause like extreme vomiting to where you have to get admitted to the hospital, get an IV and fluid wow. administered. Um. Yeah. It's, yeah, and a lot of people don't don't, don't believe that because they're like marijuana is natural; and nothing bad can happen. It's still a you know, it's still a substance. Guys, like, be smart with it. <laughs> be smart with your drugs. Okay, yeah, exactly. Um, right. <laughs> pivoting, away, pivoting away from the hungry choir for now, unless you have anything else to add about the hungry choir in particular. No, I don't want um, to talk about them anymore. <laughs> so, so Charles survived, Mom. What do you think is yeah. going to happen to Charles based on your like complete conviction that he was going to die or whatever at the end of this arc? I, yeah, I, yeah, I kind of forgot about Charles now. I, I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, now that you bring him up, you no, know, something. Yeah, it, it's not going to end well for Charles. It's just not. I'm sorry, but he, you know, he got a pass this time. uh poor charles Um, poor charles all right well um i guess going back even further i know we're not doing this in order of the actual you know sections but that's fine um like when um lucy avery and rona went to go meet john how was that like how was meeting him and what do you think of him and all that (laughs) okay i actually really like that chapter I thought mm-hmm. it was, I, I did. I really liked it. I thought it was really put you on edge, but I lo- I thought it was really cool. And um, in a strange sort of way, I, I kind of like John now and I can't explain that. I mean, it's not like he's a good guy <laughs> or anything, but yeah, I just, I thought it was good and you want him on your side and he will be a good oh, yeah. protector for those guys. And, um, you know, he's a scary guy, but yeah, but he didn't hurt him. 
really, except maybe psychologically. <laughs> except, a little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and don't you kind of want to just go clean his house? I mean, that just bothers me. <laughs> I keep, I just, it's like I, I'd have a hard time leaving there without at least straightening up a bit. It's just a pigsty. Yeah. Maybe, I don't if know. You, if but, you could only choose like one thing or one section of the house, I guess, to clean, what would you choose, uh, mom? Oh my God. I guess the, I guess the kitchen just, I'm mean, cause that you can't eat. And his, his, the stuff he was eating, like I'd have to look back and see what it was, but it was horrible. He yeah, doesn't. Somebody, no, he doesn't eat. He doesn't have to eat. No, that was a bomb that he oh. set um, on the stove. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't remember. Well, whatever it was. Yeah, it wasn't good. Oh, that's right. Oh, Sometimes yeah. I, I think thought he was eating with something, the... but in that chapter, but I don't know what was while we're talking. I have to look back. Okay. Well, so I want to, while, while Johnny is checking, fact check real time, um, I just want to like say, um, a little bit of what mom told me every once in a while when she's kind of confused she will ask me clarifying questions about what's going on and she was kind of like is john human what's happening and i was like well john isn't like is a composite of every person he's ever killed and i'm expecting mom to oh. be like wow that's so messed up and mom was like wow that's really cool and i'm just like who oh. are you what happened to my mom <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's amazing. I, I mean that. No, it really is kind of horrible, I guess. But, but I guess, it's really. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's. I mean, wow, what an imagination! It's like, whoa, that was really neat. So yeah, that's why I kind of, I kind of liked him after that. You know, I yeah, I wasn't on the John train at this point in the story. I was still freaked out by him. I was like, wow, he just like held him at gunpoint, and it's really scary. Um, yeah. But I'm glad you like him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just, I, I mean, yeah, mm. I do. I, I hate, I don't know why yeah. I like him now. Okay. Yeah. And I was looking at this and yeah, it says that, yeah, there were nails and screws and weird crap in a can. They're like, do you, you eat oh. batteries and metal? And he's like, no, I don't need to eat though. I like the routine. Mm. And then he did say that it would have exploded like a bomb. So, <laughs> Oh, okay. Because he thought people were, yeah, breaking into his house. Um, Fair enough, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I thinking about that scene. You said the goblins were your favorite. I'm curious, like, has that stayed the same? And like, if so, like, what do you think about Toad Swallow and Cherry Pop in particular, since they were the two with John, if I remember correctly? Oh, on it, Malia. What did they do again? Yes, the goblets are still my favorite because they're just kind of delightful little, um, you know, mischievous kind of pain in the butts, you know, they're, but I, I really do like them. I think they're kind of harmless because they can't get past how dumb they are and that they, they have no, <laughs> like, they just can't control their inhibitions if they try well, to do something bad. Sir Toad Swallow, right? He like wears that vest. He has like a he has a monocle. Like a monocle. You know, yeah. like is is he oh, that's is he dumb? Blast? Yeah. yeah. No, dumb is the wrong word. Okay, he's not dumb. It's just that they can't they can't control themselves. They they just mm -hmm. if they if they want to do you know if somebody makes them mad or they want to do something. They'll run so fast to go do it that they'll trip over themselves and hit their head on the trash can, you know, and all the trash will fall on them. I mean, they're just kind of delightful because they're harmless. They can't. I hope they're harmless. We'll see later. I mean, I'm sure they can do bad things, but I just think they're really funny. Yeah, <laughs> they are very funny. So um, dumb's the wrong word. They're just. Yeah, they have impulse control issues. Yeah. Impulse yeah. control. Right. That sounds cool. good. And. <laughs> Oh, Cherry. Yeah, Cherry Pop. Who's, she's just, they're so, um, uh, I don't know the word, like inappropriate. And they just say <laughs> bad things all the time, but it just comes out kind of funny. I just think it's sort of funny. What do you think about their names? Oh, that's the best. The best. <laughs> I mean, really, Cherry Pop and, and Toad Swallow, they're kind of wonderful. I mean, are you getting where that is coming from? Like, I'm not going to well, tell where, you. Where is your mind, Jen? 
What? It's where, where the goblins' minds are. That's where are, the Mom. goblins' minds are. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of a cherry lollipop myself. Mm-hmm. So, okay. what were you thinking of exactly? I no, um, I'm just anything... I, I, I'm just asking. <laughs> I just thought I'd okay, ask. I just yeah, no okay, cherry, cherry lollipop, lollipop, and I thought it was kind of cute. And toad swallow probably swallowed a toad, and so there. Okay, I mean, my dad used to. It's like my husband names his animals really weird things. And um, I'm not even going to go into that story. And your dad did too. <laughs> My dad did, but I do have a funny uh, cat story that about, that someday I'll share because that's my. You don't want to share that now. I mean, I, I know. Is, is it the sad? About. Is it the sad cat story? It is. Yeah, it's a horrible yeah. sad cat story. I mean, this could have been in that book. With, I mean. <laughs> Okay, I'll share it. Shoot, you guys. Okay, so this is my <laughs> husband who just names the animals stupid things, and I have no say so. I just don't. And so, um, this one cat, we have stray cats, and my husband says he hates cats, but he goes and buys expensive cat food and he dumps it all over the lawn because he's like convinced that some of the stray cats like eating it on the lawn more than dishes and then he'll pour it in the dishes it's all stupid it's and a, um yeah it, it's so dumb so but anyway there's this one stray cat that um that he named butthead and i'm like you can't name a cat butthead you know i mean that's just insulting it's like no no it makes sense because he butts its head against your leg all the time or something i'm like people are not gonna think that i think it's like when they were i think was she she i don't remember but like when she was hungry she would like butt her head against dad yeah whatever so there's so you name her butthead i mean really oh okay no but that's what he does i'm like people are not gonna think that so okay so this is the horrible story i you guys love horrible stories that listen to this stuff so you're gonna like this one no so one day i'm jen just control yourselves so i'm i'm out in the garden and i see I can't, I can't even call her this. I see Butthead just go tearing by behind me, you know? And I'm like, wow, what's happening? And right after her, I see this um, pit bull that was f- from next door and it escaped or something. And he's tearing after her. So she goes under um, my mom's, the cottage where mom was living. And um, that dog went after her and basically killed her. I mean, and I, and I, you know, yeah. yelled at him, got him out of there, got the, and I went under the house and she had been like gutted her, you know, it was a horrible, her intestines were halfway out. Well, Malia, it was horrible. I'm just telling you the story. I know. I'm sorry. It was awful. I was, I was so upset and, yeah. um, and actually went and found some, um, some narcotics that I just happened to have. <laughs> 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 because i'm a nurse you know so anyway <laughs> you're gonna let's get you in to explain it's from a prescription on it <sighs> okay it, yeah yeah okay well i got them and i like ground them up and put them in some tuna fish or something and just force fed them to to the cat that was under the house dying and then i put her in a little box and took her to the vet at where they put her to sleep you know and because she was suffering it was horrible and so um i did that and then the here's the deal okay so you have to register them and they're like okay what's the cat's name and i'm like uh and and my husband's like butthead and i'm like god so it's so the cat's name is butthead butthead hamilton you know so and i'm just like i'm looking i just glared at him i'm like i really hate you and you know so anyway so that happens and about two weeks later we get this nice little card from the vet oh we're so sorry you know to hear of the passing of your dear cat butthead and i thought doggone it it's signed by everybody in the vet and you know i mean i work in a i've worked in a doctor's office you know that when they pass that thing around those guys were hysterically laughing yeah they're like felt bad sure. about the cat but but they're yeah. like oh i signed this card for butthead so i yeah. can't i still haven't forgiven <sighs> pat for that one 
So that's one of the animals. That's one of my animal uh, name stories. And we could do other ones at another. I can't handle another one, Malia. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say sometime we should talk about Papa because um, yeah. your dad also yeah. named animals strange things that stuck. <laughs> But yeah, luckily there isn't a horribly depressing story associated with any of them. Right, yeah, it's just, just a weird. dumb. It's just dumb. Yeah, it's just dumb. Pune, like okay, okay, really, okay. I'll explain it then. So my dad was the same way. So one of our cats was um was named Pune. And if you guys aren't from Hawaii, uh, let me explain what a pune is. A pune is like a sofa, a special <laughs> sofa that has, it's almost like a twin bed with half of a, it has one cushion. I don't know why it doesn't have two cushions, but it just has one. And the other part is just empty. You can lean against the wall. And it's just, that's the way it is. It's a Hawaii thing. And it's named pune. And, uh, and we're like, you can't name a dead cat, you know, sofa or couch or whatever. And he's like, no, it's a pretty name, you know? And, and we couldn't ever, so she, that was Pune. It's, that, she, and she lived a really long time and people would just look at us funny. Like, oh, what's your cat's name again? Pune? Like, like the thing they get, that's on sale at that furniture store? Yes. You know, and so that was Pune. And then we, ha you know, after that, we had a cat named Susie. So I don't know why you go from Pune to Susie. And then that's we had a, a Dingbat, weird. which I, I really like that name, Dingbat. Dingbat. <laughs> I just like your Chihuahua, Chihuahua, your Chihuahua's name. Oh, my oh gosh. I'm just, I did not come up with these names. So my first Chihuahua was um, Chico, because what else do you name a Chihuahua, you know? I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Are we going to get, like, racist you know. rants? I, I hope not. But it's Chico, you know? And this was back in the yeah. 60s. And so I just thought that was not very imaginative, Dad. But he, And then the next one, he named Bambi. And I'm like, that's just so dumb. And so we had Chihuahuas and Chinese cats. And then what was the third? Oh, yeah. The next one after that was after we moved to Hawaii, got a little chihuahua and named it Kuipo. Oh. <laughs> Did you know that, Jen? Yeah. So Kuipo is sweet me. is sweetheart. So that's, that's very nice, nice. I well, I guess, yeah. I mean that's better than <laughs> it's better Pune. than Pune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but I my favorite is Dingbat. He had we had um I thought you two, had Dingbat and Tinkerbell. We Am did. I not remembering that two, wrong? Yeah. No, you're right. Okay. Were, those are my favorite names. There, there were two cats, Dingbat and Tinkerbell. And um, so <laughs> actually, I'd like to hear if, if I can ask for comments from the audience. I'd like to hear what some of your pet names are, because I'll bet I'll bet you guys have some good ones out there. That's a good yeah. question. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Good. Thanks. All Jim. right. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Move on. Moving on a little bit. Um. So, um. Back to John. So, <laughs> what do you think of the differences in how Lucy and Verona um reacted when meeting John? Yeah, I thought I thought Lucy's was a lot more normal and um. I mean, that's kind of a if you something like that happens to you, you're it's not going to just go away. You're going to have um you know, be a little bit shaken up after that. And then Verona mm -hmm. is way too calm about it. So that's a little bit disturbing too. I, I, it, you know, there's something wrong with that. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Next question. Um, kind of moving ahead just a bit from that. Um, so we saw that terrible class ranker app. What did you think about Lucy ending up at the bottom yeah. I mean, yeah, I felt really bad for her. I hate stuff like that. I mean, that is, um, a, that part of the book is not that far fetched. And, yeah. and I think it's horrible. I mean, that's the weird part about, um, being my age and seeing what the internet can do and just imagining, wow. I mean, it was bad enough when, you know, when you're picked last for, um, kickball or something like that, you know, yeah. you feel really bad for those people, um, kicked la picked last for team sports teams. And, um, that was always really hard, but look at this. I mean, you're going to vote for the most popular and, um, and I think that kind of stuff happens and 
um, yeah, I think it's really harmful. So it made me feel really bad and it doesn't seem that far fetched. Yeah. Um, why do you like, do you have any theories or thoughts about why she was picked last out of the girls? Um, I guess, didn't it say she, I mean, there were some things that I remember that she wasn't very pretty or something. I mean, that's all I can think of. I mean, usually I don't think really, I think it uh, really, at least through the book, it said that she was pretty. Yeah, oh, really? well, may, mm-hmm. I don't know then. I mean, I, um, she's kind of an angry person, you know, so maybe she wasn't as perky and, and happy and bubbly as, as some popular per- people might be, except I've le- met a lot of popular people that are just jerks too. So I, I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm not sure I get, maybe I got the not pretty part from how she thought of herself. I'm not sure. Okay. I don't know. I think she did start to ask herself, like, am I, you know, am I not pretty? Or, like, kind of have thoughts like that in that moment. But I think that um, Lucy is fairly attractive. I think that that is something established. I mean, her mom, I think, at one point says something or something. I don't know. Yeah. But, the, I mean, you'll you'll see them as we go on more. But, yeah, she's, I think it's it's fairly well established that she's pretty and she with a lot of effort into like her clothes and her hair and oh, like huh. her makeup and everything. So okay. Um Yeah, I don't know. Do uh, you do you think she would have noticed Gabe feeling badly if she hadn't been ranked last? Um if she hadn't mm-hmm. Um I still think probably I think that um she notices people that are hurt and stuff like that i just think she's kind of got that kind of heart that Mm -hmm. she can relate to other people and um so i I think she would have picked up on that and that probably would have bothered her i think she's a kind person even though she comes across as being um angry a little bit too much i think okay yeah yeah hey yeah i agree she's a nice person yeah. The reason I asked that question was just because remembering that scene, I was thinking about how I think she like gets she like looks at the app and then she starts looking around the classroom, I think, with her sight and seeing like different connections and different swords and different like things happening. Um, and I think that's what really like pings Gabe is that she can tell that he's like really upset with the sight and then she follows him oh. out. Oh, um, and I do think that you're right that Lucy is really like kind and really attentive to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just thinking like possibly a bright side ish sort of of this situation was she was like looking out for other people who were feeling really shitty as opposed to being like, yeah, I'm pretty. <laughs> yeah. 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 If anything, maybe it could be a better way to relate in terms of like, I guess a bright side could be that it wasn't pushing it in someone's face that like, Oh, like, you know, like trying to make them feel better. Like, Oh, I know you ranked like last or one of the last ones. And I know that I got voted like number one and I'm awesome, but (laughs) that's what don't pay attention to that, you know? (laughs) Oh (laughs) yeah. But no, it's, it's kind of terrible. That kind of is awful. Did you guys ever have, have you ever seen anything similar to this in high school or college or whatever um i mean there so if i remember correctly facebook was founded as the facebook it was about ranking the women on where did he go harvard or wherever um so Mm. all of their faces were pulled from like the yearbook and people would just like rank whether or not they were hot oh that's gross Um, wow i wonder if that's true malia because that seems horrible i i think it was something like that there was this app or something for a while that like was about guys it was like men um who had facebook accounts and you could go on there and say whether or not like you had horrible dates with them or they were really shitty or like they (laughs) were good in bed or like whatever i like vaguely remember that being a thing when i was in undergrad um but i don't think there was ever anything this like i've never experienced anything this like personal but i can very much imagine it yeah yeah um too in terms of personal things the only things i can think of were like pretty benign in terms of like maybe making lists with 
friends that just being mm-hmm. like, oh, like, who are the top five, like, cutest guys or like, um, <laughs> or like, yeah. Do you, this kind of, do That's you remember you getting those though. like stupid Facebooky like spam type of message or whatever where it's like, oh, like if you do this quiz or if you like pass this on, then you'll find out like, you know, like the, I don't know, like five guys who have like put you in their favorite or I don't know, something like that. <laughs> do you remember? Vaguely? Vaguely. Yeah. I never yeah. did that, but um <laughs> Which, darn, I guess I could have known, you know, could like, have known, could have known uh, <laughs> who so was a secret admirer. <laughs> um, any any other things to say about class rank or mom, you think, or pretty much just it's, it's terrible. And that's it. Yeah, I yeah, I know that it's going to keep going, I guess, in, in the story. It's really interesting. But yeah, I just really hate things like that. I think it destroys people. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's really, well, I already said that, but I just think I take it really seriously, things like that. I think it's really harmful. Um, one of the things in that first chapter that really endeared me to Verona, so like like all the way in like the beginning of the arc, was how she was like, I voted for Jeremy and Wallace because they seem like good guys and also like guys who might not get votes. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that was interesting was I think it wasn't just Gabe who didn't receive votes out of the boys. I think there were several boys who didn't receive any votes. And I'm not sure if that's, I could go check, but I'm not sure if that's because there are like more boys in the class or like what, or, you know, if just like Amadeus and George got like all the votes or whatever. But I thought that was sort of interesting that like there was more of a spread among the girls. Um, And thinking that like, if Avery hadn't voted for Pam, Pam also wouldn't have gotten any votes and she would have been down at the bottom with Lucy. Just mm. kind of like things that that says about the class and the whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But it was just the different strategies behind the three protagonists at the beginning of the like picking mm-hmm. and then seeing the results I thought was really interesting. Like that's how we learned that Avery is a lesbian and really, really like invested in wants a relationship really badly and is really like concerned with it. Verona doesn't really care. Lucy just picks like the hottest guys. Like it was kind of an interesting Mm -hmm. look into these characters' lives, even if it's also Mm -hmm. like, wow, how do I have children in a world where shit like this exists? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, So also just about class ranker. um, So we obviously can see like, lucy's issue with it but um i mean her she got she didn't get any votes so obviously mm-hmm. she's gonna have a lot of negative feelings about that is it easy for you to or like i guess going into avery and verona um they also have their own like reasons to have issues with this app in terms of how like the, the ranking and everything was i'm trying to remember if they went, went into that that much or not but can you see any like problems with that or like um looking can you talk about a little bit of like what do you think of Avery and Verona's perspectives? I'm sorry I didn't give you this question before. I just thought of it. <laughs> uh um if, if you want a reminder, I can give a brief summary of how they both felt from what I remember. Yeah, sure. Okay, so from what I remember, Avery, when she's playing basketball, right, is thinking a lot about the connections in the class. She's thinking about how you know some of the boys liked her and put her as like a heart because she's like cute and fun and sporty um but she doesn't like them back right like and Mm -hmm. avery was very alone didn't have friends and i think with avery it's kind of like she still feels alone right she's the only lesbian in the class and she or the only girl who likes girls at all in the class and that makes her feel really alone and really isolated even if like several guys have crushes on her and then Verona, like, doesn't like Jeremy or Wallace. She thinks they're chill. But the fact that she got a mutual like might kind of be freaking her out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I thought she sort of liked Jeremy a little bit. But but she's just probably not ready for, you know, for anything to really okay. happen. And mm-hmm. but. um, Yeah, so I don't think it probably impacts her as much as Lucy and then um, Avery, like you said, it's really nice to have people pick you, but that's not really um, 
what she's looking for. So you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, um, yeah, but she's, you know, that's a hard one to, um, to be gay and be that age. I think that's gotta be, um, it's hard. It's bad enough to be that age anyway, really (laughs) hard for everybody. Yeah. I think even if you are really pretty or athletic or if you not, if you're not at all, it's gotta be that much worse, but it's just, um, I think that, being like in high school is just really tough. And, um, no matter I, people are growing up and there's some people that are very kind. It's probably like in real life too, though. It's, um, you know, even as you're an adult, there's people Mm -hmm. who want to build you up and who are really positive and great for your great to be around really loyal friends. And then there's others that, you know, you think you're your friends that basically might be jealous of you or, or, and really don't want to see you succeed. So, but high school, um, I think that's the start of it and where people are kind of, um, learn, you know, it's really important to them. Your friends and, um, relationships are so important at that stage and you're just kind of figuring it out and figuring out where you belong, you know, so Mm -hmm. that's really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm curious, what do you think about Verona's desire to not be human anymore? Um, yeah, that, that bothered me, (laughs) but I don't even know. I don't really even know what that means. What I guess it doesn't necessarily mean she wants to die. It might mean she wants to be one of those others or whatever, Mm -hmm. I guess. And, um, I just think that's messed up. Basically, that she shouldn't, yeah, that she's going way too far in that direction because, I mean, her life without the other two girls and all this um, exciting but kind of, you know, terrifying stuff happening to them, you know, mm-hmm. uh, her life is not wonderful. Her home life is, is not good. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, so maybe she doesn't have a whole lot to you know, to live for or something, she, she might look at it that way. But, um, yeah, I certainly hope that she can get some help through some other means so that she can find more purpose in her life and, and stuff like that. Hang in there. Cause being human is kind of good. It's actually a good thing. <laughs> Do you think she's going to try to move in that direction of not being human anymore? And what do you think she'll try to do? If she does. Uh, yeah, my guess is because, um, you know, that seed was planted in the book. I do think that she'll, um, probably try to move. I'm just guessing that she'll try to move in that direction more. And, um, what'll she do? I don't know. I mean, I can't remember how you do that. I've got a kitty in my face. Yep. So, um, (laughs) sorry, there's a cat in my in my way but that happens when you have cats i need to name this i forgot her name this is nella this is another cat (laughs) yeah i forgot her name i'm thinking (laughs) that head because that's what she's doing right now she's disturbing me okay uh how will she do that i don't know maybe she'll be really dumb and talk to like um miss and and miss will give her some advice like well you could do this by you know I just well, didn't Miss say like diagram- I'm not going to tell you how to do it? Uh, I thought when she told her, Miss was like, she was oh. like, "Oh, will you help me?" And Miss was like, "No." And she's like, "Okay, will you stop me?" And Miss was like, "No," or something like that. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Well, she she could still ask the little goblins; they would help her. They that that'd be fun for them to just lead her down the wrong path. So that could definitely <laughs> be a thing. <laughs> yeah that's my guess i'll go with the goblins okay and then okay. how do you think lucy and avery would feel or react if yeah Bro no, does something? They, i think they try to they tr- try to um get those little goblins out of the way and and pull verona back into humanity where she belongs you know plus they need her they you know yeah. they need her they need three of them and um but they also will want to rescue her from 
whatever place she's going into because they know that, you know, her life can get better. There's ups and downs in everyone's life and she's not in a good place right now, but, um, but that doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. So I think they will try to help her. What do you think? So going on to the miss, um, and Avery here. So what do you think about, um, Mrs. Gift for Avery, um, the directions for the forest ribbon trail? Oh, okay. No, I thought that was really cool. I think that's the best gift and it. Just the others were neat too, though. But that one, I thought, Ooh, this is going to be something, um, big and Avery's definitely going to get on this trail and really bad and good things are going to happen if this is going to be a big part of the story. So I, I like that based I, on kind of, Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I kind of can't wait to see that part of the story. I think it's going to be a really good chapter. Okay. Um, based on what you know about it, would you do the trail? Oh, are you guys here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, yes, I would do the trail because this is, you know, I never would have jumped into this dumb thing in the first I never would have signed up for it in the first place I, let me make that clear but if you got this far yes I would do the trail because you have to I mean you know for one thing what's it called the trail it was the, forest the forest urban trail yeah just that it sounds really inviting you have to do that and you know it's going to be amazing and there's yeah I would definitely do it yeah do you remember what or what, what do you know about it trying to remember what they what they talked about like okay let me talk about about a wolf i think okay no i have it the forest ribbon trail she needs to there's some kind of ritual um is there is it a ritual so she can get on the trail i I think or yeah what does it say (laughs) well i that's my question i think it is but she has to capture an animal um and a certain kind of animal like one that hasn't been chewed up or something (laughs) and she has to capture it with some ribbon or something you know so um and then she has to stay on the path or she will be lost so i'm anticipating times when the path will be very vague and there will be this fork in the road and she doesn't she can't tell which way is the path and she'll get lost and all this stuff so that's got to be part of it Um, And then there was something about the word lost was in capital letters and the word wolf was. So there's definitely a wolf thing happening. And um, if, if she does it right, that um, she will, she probably will almost lose her life, but there she'll receive some great gift at the end. And so I, and, um, and also it, she'll be changed at the end in some way. If she does it wrong, she'll be lost forever. But it's just, that's really intriguing. So I just, yeah, I like that part. (laughs) Okay. Um, What do you think about Mrs. Other Gifts? Okay. um, The the Verona one was um, the school. And Mm -hmm. that could be really neat. I mean, it could be like Hogwarts or something, you know? So that could be really fun. And then the, the pin is really neat too. I am. I just don't have enough imagination for it, but she could do really good stuff with that. I, I think that's fun. And then um, Lucy got the ring and I don't understand it. It was a ring that became a weapon or something, right? What does that mean? She puts it on her finger and. Oh, I guess we'll have to see it in use. Oh, come on. <laughs> but so, <laughs> you guys are supposed to tell me I'm confused about some things, but anyway, um, that one was really cool. And I know that when she uses it, it, um, it'll draw strength or power and it'll, she'll probably be all wiped out after using it. So yeah, it's, those are really neat. I like them. Okay. Awesome. I see. I guess we have a few questions from some listeners as well. Um, oh boy. so our first one here is from Megafire. They say, last time you said that Jenny reminded you of Avery, Emily reminded you of Lucy. Has your opinion on this changed? Phew. Okay. Um, I have to think about that one. Um, Jenny and Avery. Avery, um, actually, you guys both have a little bit of Avery in you. Um, but 
Um, but no, she's still, I got to think about that. I don't know. I know it's here. It's okay. I'm not like, ready. Okay. Well, these questions are, are re I love this question. It's really, really good. I want you to ask me this every time, but I'm not quite ready okay. for it. I guess, um, you guys both, both of you guys have a strong sense of fairness, like especially Jenny. I don't even know if, if you, you've always had that. Like we have to be so careful as parents, what we promise you, because man, <laughs> I, I promise her what a, they, these guys were just over here to visit. And, um, I'm like, I'll take, I can take care of, um, of Miko for four days. You know, you guys can go explore the island, go have fun. And, you know, if they came back early on one day, you know, like in the afternoon, but didn't stay for dinner, Jenny'd be like, okay, th this still counts, right? You're still going to give me a dinner. And, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. Help me, you know, so she keeps track. Of okay. Everything. Look, I'm sorry, but if you have like a little two-year-old and another <laughs> baby on the way and there, you don't have any, like hardly any immediate family that can help like, <laughs> like in your immediate area um you bet your ass <laughs> i'm sorry that i'm gonna take <laughs> that i'm gonna take that time for dates i'm sorry yeah Mom. no no it actually <laughs> it was total fun he was a delight you know, okay. now that he's been gone three days i'm like yeah he was you know all the, the <laughs> forgot like, all the, bad, all the bad stuff yeah no no he was awesome i love him but oh, but he was exhausted he was exhausting but the cutest little guy and um <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and i'm trying to think of stuff like you're really um Lucy seemed really sympathetic to people and stuff like that, but you guys both are too. So it was hard to think of different things like, um, Jen, I think you're, you've always been pretty athletic. You too, Malia. See, I have to be careful in this. You guys are going to be, so I'm going to, just so you know, we like, feelings. we like all the protagonists. So we're, you're not going to offend us by telling us that we're like one of them. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, I still think you've got some Lucy in you, Jen, because you've got that compassionate side and, um, not the, see, this is so hard. You guys, Malia's really compassionate too. She's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I know. See, that's how it's so hard, but, um, okay. I don't know that, that I'll still stick with my, um, with it, pairing you guys up with those two for now, but it could Wait, change. So I'm Lucy and Jenny's Avery. Did I switch it? I think you switched it. I'm oh, Avery now, God. and Jenny's Lucy. Okay. Oh, I kind of did switch it. That's disturbing. Yeah, but I think <laughs> why you know, is it disturbing? It's fine. Then I sw I didn't even realize I switched it. But but you know Malia <laughs> Malia does you know have a um she's bisexual and so she you know I know this part of it she can I can relate to it more like oh I can see her you know really liking some girl or whatever and um and so that part but yeah uh i don't know yeah okay i switched you guys so there all right cool i'll try to awesome. pair you, one of you up with a verona sometime i'll have to think i'll get to know her more okay <laughs> <laughs> all right next question i'll let you read it malia awesome okay um a bird asks, can you, in as vivid and specific detail as you can, describe one moment, person, or scene from what you think is going to happen at the end of this book? Oh, boy. They, these guys do killer questions. That's a great question. Um, um, can I just say no? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'll try to do a little bit better. Um, okay, here's my prediction is that... Avery is going to do that fabulous forest trail and she's going to have just horrible decisions and things happen and fight a wolf and um, get a little banged up, but she's going to make it to the end of the trail and she'll be amazing. So that's my prediction. Okay. All right. Okay. Very cool. Um, Next for, let me see, Alejandro Villarreal. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, um, asks, what would you do with Verona's quill? Oh, see, I love this question, Alejandro. That's a great one. I don't have a really good answer because 
um, can't really think of anything specific, but um, I would, you've, you've got to do something to stop that hungry choir. I mean, there's got to be, I just, that those guys are, have gone too far. I don't want to hear about them much anymore. I want them to go away. <laughs> so I wonder, <laughs> I have a feeling they're not going to go away, but maybe there's some kind of trap that they can, that she can do, um, like make this um, bottomless pit thing or some kind of horrible thing where that, that um, stops their abilities and, um, and makes them, let make some words like, you know, go here to find some, you know, and, and then it makes them fall into this trap. So I don't know. I, I, that's a really bad answer, but I would try to do something to, um, ensnare the hungry choir so that they don't have any powers anymore. That would be amazing. What if she could use it to change the words of the song or something? Oh, it's not going to help. I mean, what? It, <laughs> really, I mean, really the sing along, like <laughs> make I don't it know. easier to, 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 to do the ritual by just saying, I don't know, the same word over no, and over or something. No, it's got to, oh gosh. No, no, I don't think that's the whole problem with it. I wonder if they could, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I have to give that some thought. Okay. So Sleeping Beluga has a lot of really great questions for you. I am, we saved some to maybe ask in a future episode, um, just in case. I mean, there were a couple where I was like, oh, I'd like to hear this when you're a little farther along in the story. Um, so the first question that Sleeping Beluga asks that we're going to talk about is, how do you think the web serial format that Wild Bo employs influences the structure of Pale? So they define the web serial format that Wild Bo employs as very big books owing to a constant steady stream of chapters. Okay. Well, okay, just to be fair, um, Sleeping Beluga, which is like the best name, just to be fair, I'm not really reading it that way because the book is already, it's already come out and it's complete. So it's well, not. Mm -mm. No, we don't. It's not done yet. We don't know what's happening. Really? So we yeah. can influence him and tell him, please, please have these two fall in love and make a happy ending. And let's I bring mean, Gabe back. I don't back. think he's going to fall for that, but you but could, I mean, you can ask him that. We can ask. We can ask. And we, if that does know. happen, then you can always believe in your heart that it was you. <laughs> That, that, I will that, that. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, wow. I know. So that's part of it is that I kind of believe that I could just that we could all get together, and not just me, but we could all get together and go bring Gabe back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, but I actually think that's a really cool way to have a um, a book is to you know you've got to wait for the next chapter to read it i think that's really awesome yeah but but like i said i'm not me personally i'm not really doing it that way these guys are like hurry up and read this mom because because they're kind of ahead of me does it seem like the structure of the story seems different than like um a fully like published novel um just knowing that like it's being released it's, it's based i mean if you think about it like the editing and everything has to be kind of hell for him right <laughs> so it's like he can't just like go back and be like oh i don't really like this part of the story um he kind of has to like you know just deal with <laughs> deal with it because he already put it out there you know wow that's really true he's stuck with it huh he can't really change his mind after it's out there but he's done great it's pretty what he's done he can do a lot with this so far it's great could go anywhere but yeah i um what was your oh. oh i was just like um comparing this story oh like how it's written to like um a, pub a fully published like whole novel does it seem like um the structure is different or that it reads differently it, it like doesn't to me really because i've seen other novels that are from um it you know, lots of novels will take one person and do a chapter from their perspective and then change it to another. And I, I really love novels like that. I think it's really interesting to get the different perspectives. And the other thing that he does that I 
just really like are those um, extras that he puts in there, like that mm-hmm. little pamphlet about, you know, oh, come to this, you know, great party we're going to have where we're, there's a sing along. Oh, my God. All you can eat. Oh, that's horrible. But it's <laughs> it's kind of, that, but that was awesome. I really liked it. And the diagrams and just the remember at the beginning, the um, ski brochure of Kenneth. All that stuff mm-hmm. is really neat. I really like it. Mm hmm. So, um, you know, lots of books don't have that in there, but I have seen them in books before, maps and things. Mm-hmm. And just to let you know, he does all that art his, and everything himself. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Wow. That's neat. Yeah. It's pretty talented. Yeah. Well, second Sleeping Blue question. Um, if you could, what would you ask Wild Bo regarding Pale? Oh, my gosh. I, I'd probably... Um, ask him to please have a happy ending. <laughs> I can't deal with that. And don't, and um, no, that's terrible. I, what would I ask him? Um, I just, there's certain, I have things I would tell him like that. I really, really like um, some of where his imagination goes. Like um, I especially like the characters like John made up of, the people he's killed. I think that's amazing. I mean, who'd ever come up with that stuff? I just think it's really cool. And the, and Edith, oh man, she's what, what was it with her? She's, she's made up of, um, what Malia, um, remember spirits. Yeah. She's a composite spirit. Right. So a bunch of different spirits that have to do with like fire and stuff. Like, so scroll by candlelight that like lives in Edith, Edith's body pretty much. Yeah, but that other eat is still alive. So anything could happen with there. I'm like, I, 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 I want him to do something where somehow she comes out of her coma. That'll be a nightmare for Matthew. <laughs> I mean, that, see, now I'm starting to think really these. I now I'm starting to go with you guys. Get to like all the all the really dark stuff. That's scary. <laughs> really is all happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um also if you if you could ask him anything in general, what would you ask him? Wild bow? Yes. Okay. I I'd want to ask him what in the world happened in your childhood? Poor Wild Bow. You can tell us. I mean, honestly, you know that it must have been something traumatic, you know, to just make him come up with this kind of stuff. I'm sorry, but yeah. I'd be really curious. He probably has some stories to tell. Yep. Yeah. It's true. Probably true. Okay. So, um, tis a rat, <laughs> as we lovingly tis pronounce your rat. name. Oh, that's awesome. They, that needs um, to be, that needs to be one of the goblin names. That's awesome. Oh, tis yeah. a rat. Yeah. Ah, that's a good that's one. True. That's a good one. <laughs> um, so you've said mom that the girls choosing to get involved was a bad idea. Given the advantage of experience, if you were in their place, what would you do differently after being awakened? I would probably run. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where they can hide. But after they're awakened, wow. I mean, I'd probably do something dumb like tell my mom and dad so they could help me. But that's not going to help any of well, these girls. They're asking... Um, I guess given the advantage of experience, I guess you could take that in two ways. Um, one being that you're in their exact place, being their age and everything. The other one being exactly as you are right now, oh. if you're awakened. Well, okay, that's interesting. Um, well, I think that the the people that I, I can't say I can relate to them, but the, I'm just um, intrigued by them. Um, like John and the goblins, (laughs) I would try, I would try to befriend them, you know, get to know them better so that maybe I could use them to my advantage. You know, some, some of the people like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we have, um, Elliot and Ruben had a couple questions. They are, um, I'm sorry. Um, they're from another podcast, Pale Reflections. Um, they it's a really Ew. awesome podcast um, where they talk all about this story as well. Um, so 
let me see their first question. Um, what is the first thing you'd do if you awoke and had access to this kind of magic? Ew, that's a great question. Um, I don't, I don't know they could do this, but I've always wanted to fly. So I'm going to say I'd want to use that magic and see if I could fly. That'd be really cool. You, you know, you probably could spy on other people and stuff, but after seeing what happens when you know what other people say and think, um, I think that's dangerous. I don't think I would do it. You know, like, like try to find out what are they saying about me and stuff. I just, I think sometimes um, ignorance is bliss. So I don't think I would go there. Yeah. You know, because, uh, you know, yeah, I'll say I would like to fly. <laughs> I like that. Um, <laughs> and then they, they ask, actually, would you want to awaken in this world? A- absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no way. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, um, and then they also ask, um, any early impressions of the Kenneteer parents and their parenting staples? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, I don't have that really written down in a place, so I'll try to just remember. Um, I know Avery has this big, crazy homeschooled family. And, I mean, it just seems like a, a normal big family that you could kind of get lost in. The mom and dad are probably super busy. And I don't remember that much good or bad about the mom and dad. I know she has a, a sister who's really a pain and the, a brother that she called a penis. So, you know, it's kind of, it sounds all normal to me too. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I don't have anything that sticks out right there with Avery, um, except that I feel bad for her. She's kind of, you know, been, feel, felt alone a lot. Oh, you know what I don't like? Yeah, that family that makes her watch that dumb show every night. I mean, mm. gee, talk about the family bondage, huh? Uh. <laughs> you guys you guys might have to explain that one. We or don't. We, already done? we <laughs> don't. don't have to. Okay, well, they're going to think. Well, I don't know what they're going to think. You can explain. What? What's family well, bondage, mom? <laughs> family bondage is a thing in our family where <laughs> yeah please where, explain more than that okay. please. <laughs> no it's where you you're kind of forced to be together and it's it's basically family bonding you know where okay we're gonna we're gonna take a trip together and we're all gonna be you know camping out for a week and we're gonna have fun and we're gonna sing songs and do yeah all that kind of stuff and um, even though it might be lame or whatever, then that's instead of calling it family bonding. I think it was one of you guys, like Jenny, that labeled it family bondage. <laughs> no, that was you for sure. No, are you sure? Oh yeah, because you didn't have a clue what like what that implied, and so you'd be yeah. like, "It's family bondage because you guys are forced to have fun and sing songs." Ha ha ha. Yeah, that was you for sure. Okay, but you guys. You- I don't know where you get all this stuff because you went to a nice Catholic school. We, we, I, again, that came from you. Uh, okay, that was all okay. you. Okay. But that's what family bondage is, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's, if, in case you didn't weren't familiar with the term. It's, it's a real thing. Because we made it up as yeah. a family. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I'm still with parents. Hi, I forgot. Okay. So that was Avery's and then... What is it? Lucy has the mom who's a nurse, right? Mm -hmm. She's just really busy and she's sick. And um, that's really hard. I don't I really like her mom and think she's sweet. And um, yeah, that's it. I think I think she's probably a a nice mom and um, Mm -hmm. don't know much more about her, except she's kind of works hard, you know. And then there's um, Verona's dad. Boy, I. I have a lot to, there's a lot to say about him. Um, I think, I, I think he's not doing the parenting thing as well as he could be, <laughs> but let me put it that way. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I do can tell absolutely he's depressed. He's burnt out more than anything. And, um, he un- but he unloads on Verona way too much. You you're not supposed to do that 
as a parent and I unload mm-hmm. on you kids. I know I've unloaded on you um, quite a bit and you call me on it <laughs> when I do because <laughs> they, they, these kids, it's really, even as you're older and your kids get older and they move away, um, I've been through some really hard things and, mm-hmm. um, and I have reached out to you guys and you've been really, really helpful to me and supportive and helped me to see, um, how, yeah, it's normal for me to be having a hard time with this, but you've also, um, called me on it when it's like, okay, um, I, I don't think I can hear any more of this right now and stuff. And I appreciate it because, you know, I don't want to do that to you guys, but it's interesting when your kids get older and they're adults and, um, you know, it, I don't know. I, I like it a lot. It's really cool. But I also know that um, you need to still look at your parents in certain ways. You don't want to look at your mom as absolutely falling apart and your dad is a horrible jerk, which maybe, <laughs> you know, or yeah. vice versa. But I mean, it's been stuff like that when I'm like, oh, your dad did this. What in the world am I doing? So, you know, so I, <laughs> I realize that even if you're 30 years old, you still, you know, um, need to step back and you, you need your parents as I need you guys, you know, but Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I'm getting off of, um, but anyway, that's about Verona's dad. I just think he, um, in a perfect world, he, he really should get therapy. And if he can't afford therapy, um, he needs to find somebody, um, that, you know, a next door neighbor or, um, talk to, you know, a stuffed animal or talk to, um, his, a friend, I know, but a, a friend, any, you know, something t- try to do or d- get a journal, dad, that would be really good. Just write in a journal, all of your feelings and all of your, you know, hopes and dreams and the rotten people at work that are jerks to you and how Verona's not doing your chores and you're really mad at her. And, you know, she needs to pick up her weight because you have two jobs and, and, you know, she's eating those chocolate chips that you pay for with out of your second job. And, you know, he's just he's kind of lost it. Yeah. He needs to back up and be a parent again. Just not look lean on her so much. So, yeah, he's doing that wrong. Verona could be better. I mean, she could do she could do her chores when she's supposed to. But I think that's kind of a kid thing. You know, um, I'll, you know, no kid does their chores all the time or else. I think they'd be kind of weird. I mean, I think you'd be a little bit, I, not that, you know, I think you'd strive for that, but, but every kid, um, if you, if you girls never rebelled, you were actually so good as far as I can tell, you know, but I think you were actually, I was really blessed by you guys not getting into too much trouble and, um, and all that kind of stuff, you were pretty good. And if you would have done everything perfectly right and done all your chores when I wanted to and never done anything wrong, I think um, that would be a red flag. I mean, I would I would worry about it a little bit as far as you're going to move away from home and what the cred are you going to do, you know, yeah. when you're in a different, when you move to the mainland, you're going to just go nuts. So, so that's why um, I think it's okay to do a little bit wrong, but Verona, she could pick it up a little bit. You know, she and give her dad so to, a, a few. So to, oh, go ahead, Melissa. So to push back on that slightly, Mom, the two chapters in this arc where Verona is home start with Verona doing a lot of chores. <laughs> yeah, no, I. The I, first I chapter starts with her doing the laundry, cleaning everything. She like cleans the top of the TV. She does like every single thing her dad right. can think of, and like she wants something, but she is doing the chores. And then the other chapter starts with her doing like mowing the lawn well, okay okay okay, um, okay. i guess there is I, another chapter where she's not home but the ones where she's home she okay, is doing no. chores. <laughs> okay but i just had to do the dad thing because i'm a parent but no i'm totally on verona's side i mean the thing the other thing that she does is after she does all these things since he's exhausted he's never happy there's always more chores and there's always the backyard you know, or there's always dinner to fix. And so, no, I agree sometimes. And sometimes you need to step back and say, wow, thank you. And just not say the other thing you want to say, you know, which is no, can you do this and this, you know? So no, I'm, I'm really get it with Verona. I'm on her side. I, I, if there has to be sides, I agree. And oh, let me say a marriage thing for this. 
because all you people listening to this, um, I don't know how old you are, but I bet some of you guys are married or are thinking about it or have boyfriends. This is where um, our girlfriends are. Yeah. Who, who oh, yeah. Yeah. Up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Girlfriends. Or, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. So anyway, if you have that, you don't want, if they do something nice for you, like fold the laundry or if they change a diaper, if they do, or if they do dinner and, um, but they do it in a way that you would not have done it that way. Um, you smile and you say, thank you. That is really good advice because if you're like, Oh, well, you know, you need to sort the clothes this way and put the towels, you know, can you just fold the towels this way next time? And, and, you know, when I do the, when I change the diaper, I always do, you know, do this and you, you did it kind of, you know, I didn't like the way you did it or something, they are probably going to say, well, forget it then. And they're not going to, you're not going to get that help. You need to lighten up a bit and just say thank you and be grateful because, um, yeah, I, that's a thing. And parents too, you need to just, um, if they do the front lawn, but don't do the back and if they miss a few spots or whatever, um, you say thank you. And maybe later on you can, um, show them, Hey, when I do the lawn, um, you know, you might have, it might turn out a little bit more evenly if you do it this way, you know, and just kind of show them next time. But basically when somebody does something nice for you and they're tired and they come back in the house and show you, you need to just say thank you. And that's it. Just stop yourself, <laughs> which I always do. Don't I, you guys? <laughs> Maybe mm -hmm. not. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> but I try. I get it. You try. <laughs> so for our last listener question, Snowdrops Tiny Fan asks, now that you've had more time to get acquainted with the parents of each trio member, what is your opinion on their parenting? Was there anything they could have or should have done to prevent their children from winding up in this dangerous world? Okay. Um, I think I kind of answered that. Let me, um, let me just mm -hmm. go through them again. Lucy's mom, I think her parenting is probably as good as she can do. I think she's caring and she's a single mom, right? Single parent. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she is also sick. I think she tries to check in with Lucy and, and do the best she can. So I, I think that, um, I don't, I don't think she could do much more, you know, except, um, maybe ask for help, like get another parent, mm. like, um, like Verona's parents and be like, Hey, can you guys not Verona's? What am I saying? Avery's. Avery's <laughs> no, but, but I'm, yeah, not Verona's get, get somebody like another parent that she knows, um, a relative, or if she knows there be that, um, they're friends with Avery, then maybe ask those parents, Hey, can you, um, do you mind doing blah, blah, blah for, you know, I don't know. But anyway, I just, I don't think she could have done that much more. And then there's, um, Avery's parents. Um, like I said, I think they're, um, I, I don't think they probably pay enough one-on-one -on -one attention to Avery, to be honest. I think, mm -hmm. I think she's totally missing out on that. I think it's a nice thing if they could figure it out and have, um, either both of them or one of them just have a thing that they do once a month or something where they go out with Avery and, you know, take a, take a walk or watch a movie or do something and just, you know, go out to dinner with her and, or, you know, or breakfast, just do something fun. And where, um, she feels really special and she's able to spend an hour and a half with them and confide with them and feel like, wow, they're totally, you know, not on their phone. They're just listening to what I have to say. And I don't have to watch this stupid, um, thing, you know? So I think they mm -hmm. could do stuff like that more. Definitely. Lucy's mom is more, um, restricted, you know, she has more things. And then there's, um, Verona's dad who, um, yeah, he's, I, I don't know if he can do any better. I, I think he does need to, like I said, have a journal and try to talk to somebody else. Um, and he definitely just needs to 
have some time with Verona that's not work related and not him related. He needs to he needs to have some time. And like I said, take her out to breakfast for pancakes, spend an hour and a half and just talk to her about, hey, what did you do last week? Tell me three things, you know, something like that. And um, <laughs> where he makes an effort to um, to be a dad that's really interested in his daughter. I mean, it's not that hard. And she would it, it'd be so helpful for her. Maybe she would have, you know, opened up about. Oh, the, I have this wild awakening thing happening, Dad. Do you, I, I feel a little bit uncomfortable at it. What do you think? Or who knows? You know, he could be going. Let's all go camping that weekend. We don't need to. You don't need to go sell your souls to these crazy choir people. You know, let's all let's all you know let's all make s'mores and go on a camp out, and we can have our own sing along, and and we can do some crazy things like that. You know, go hiking. You know, we're in Kennet. It's beautiful there. You know, so maybe if one of the parents would have found out, they could have taken the kids and they they could have avoided this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, another question I have is, what do you think about Verona's mom? Oh, man, that's the one who doesn't pay. Yeah, I think she's I think she's horrible. I mean, really, it's just the two, the combination is the worst. Yeah, I, I forgot about her because um, the dad is right at the moment he's doing the best he can, which is not enough. He he really needs to try to figure out something else. But part of it, the mom makes him feel like he has no support. And just think of how it makes Verona feel, you know, um, she's she feels rejected by a parent, which is unthinkable. That's mm -hmm. really hard. So, um, yeah, the mom is a jerk. Yeah. Maybe I would do something with that quill pin to do something to, to just get some fast money out of Verona's mom. We could write a check. <laughs> we could just write a check with that pin Dang, and mom. she wouldn't, well, she's awful, you know? Yeah, I know. I just popped into my head. Yeah. That's a thought. So there. <laughs> okay. And then um, last question from Snowdrop's tiny fan. What would you do if you found out that Jenny and I had secretly awakened and were embroiled in a situation like this? Uh, you know, this just brings me back again to high school and, <laughs> and you guys were way too good, but still it, remember how I had this thing with you that if you guys, cut class or do bad things like that. I, I you were going to see your mom pull up a chair with you in that class the next time. And embarrassment is nothing. I am going to be sitting next to you in class. And um, couldn't you see me in PMAX class or something? Just, sit, oh, geez. just, sit, oh, just with a chair, with a chair there in, um, as oh, our science teacher. Teach? Yeah. And, um, oh, and, yeah, we could tell. Well, anyway, we won't. Okay, but anyway, I'll, 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 I'll pull up a chair and I'm going to be sitting next to Jenny because she's the one who's going to cut class, you know, with Melissa and um, and try to go to Tasty Crest or something, you know, for, for lunchtime. And so it's like you're going to get busted and your mom's going to be in class with you the next the next time we have science class. And I'll, I won't do anything to embarrass you, Jenny. I'll just be sitting there with the, I won't raise my hand or anything unless I'm called upon. And then um, I, you know, unless PMAC calls on me, but, um, but I'll just sit there. He definitely so would. That, uh, yeah, he definitely, he definitely would. And, um, <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be great. And then, uh, but yeah, that was my thing with them was I was going to sit with them in class, you know, when they really got in trouble for ditching class. Do you guys still call it ditching? Yeah. Ditching, cutting oh, okay. class, skipping, yeah. cutting, class. cutting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Same thing. So that was it. So I would say as bad as this would be, I'm your mom and I love you guys. And I would have to somehow be awakened myself. And <laughs> <laughs> you didn't expect that? No, I would have to just be a part of this because you guys are going to do stupid things. And rude. so I would be there to not rude. No, you would do that's just dumb. So I would have to jump in there and just be by your side so I could see what the heck you're going to do next, you know? And then I would 
talk to people like John and, um, and explain to him that you guys, you know, you, your brains aren't fully developed. We need to, we need to help them with this. (laughs) And, uh, you know, we need to just help them understand, you know, what they need to do with all these, um, skills, I guess that, and choices that they've been given. Yeah. So I'd be there with you. All right. I didn't expect that. But I love that, Mom. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do things for your kids, you know? <laughs> All right. Now it's time for three things. Oh, my gosh. I Now I kind of want to say that because I kind of like that. Okay. So I just want to say... Uh, I I love you both unconditionally, and I would even be awakened for you just to protect you. Although, oh. how, don't you think? Don't you think I'd be a great protection? I'd probably get you in more trouble. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I mean, you I could be a no, distraction, I guess. But I could be a distraction. I mean, can you think of any time when I actually protected you from? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you have. Cause, yeah, you know, I'm sure I have. Um, yeah, that's true. I can. I just just think of times when it's yeah okay uh three things um i feel bad about verona and her dad and i just have to say parenting is hard Mm. and sometimes there's no right or wrong you just kind of do the best there has been times when that my my parenting I think we did pretty well, but um, it sure wasn't perfect. There's some things I would have done differently, but I do remember at least two times when I took you guys in your room, closed the door, sat down and go, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do about this. And I just threw it back on you guys. Like what, what would you do? And some of your punishments that you came up with were so much worse than what I would have (laughs) done. It was hilarious. It was like, I think, I think you should, you know, gra- put ground us for a month and take away, you know, this and that. I'm like, wow, really? <laughs> you know, so, so I think just parenting is hard. There's no rule book. And if anybody out there has kids, when you get a little bit older, you can, I, I really think this is the thing you should try this and just take the kids shut them in the room, everybody sit on the floor, shut the door and go, okay, I'm stumped. I have no idea. And, and see what your kids will say, you know, that you should do as a parent. You might be very surprised. They might have some good advice. (laughs) They also might be like, oh, you should give us free ice cream. But you know, yeah, you're right. They might. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. And then, um, the last thing I just have to say, I'm so happy that that um, that that horrible chapter is over. I've been dreading that for, um, and thinking about it and agonizing over it for about two months. So I'm really glad <laughs> that I got through it and I think I can go on. So that's my three. I'm going to survive. Yeah, I'm going to survive. Right. And the, yeah, that's my three things. <laughs> Does it turn you off? Malia, I hate you. Obnoxious. Obnoxious. Holy what what song was that jim that was a titanic that song that was like, my heart I will go, go on, on mom oh my god no because you I will go it was so bad uh, so bad okay you're add that to the no. cia list <laughs> i like that song no yeah, but in that in, uh, uh, so the song's that's gonna fine, be but if you're singing it in that way like <laughs> it was literally just like ding, 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 ding. yeah um, okay, let's well, add that I, to the let's add that to the one of the hungry choir songs. Like maybe yeah, they're okay. gonna maybe they're gonna sing it in that way, Malia. At the next ritual. Yeah, be that'd like, be kind of awesome. There's no words, but you have to say the <sighs> and like the right t- the right tone. Yeah. Oh, that's like, hard. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's rough. <laughs> um. Ugh. Now I, I was gonna say something, but I got distracted by that terrible <laughs> most. Jeez, um, it's gonna bother me. I was really gonna say something. <laughs> what were you talking about? I don't even know. You We're made not- it through the hungry oh. choir, and we're yeah. proud of you. Yeah. Now I can just hear the stupid song. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I feel like I was in the middle of saying something to you. Damn it. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> it's just like the Meow Mix song now. It's just going to be stuck in there forever. Yeah, okay, move on, Jen. You can do it. All right. Um, I guess now it's time for your book recommendation. Okay, well, I will just make a recommendation based on the one that I'm reading right now. I'm reading a book um, called The Mists of Avalon. Here, Jenny, you guys Google it right now. See who the author is, because I don't remember. But um, this is a book I read like before kids, so like 30 years ago. And I thought it was really cool. And um, it's basically a book about King Arthur and, you know, the round table and Camelot and all that stuff um, from from more of a woman's perspective. So I think it's kind of interesting. And it's it's kind of like um, the mystical world and Christianity kind of mixed together. So it's, it gives you a lot of, it's just a lot of things to think about. It's really interesting. And there is um, that love story and a lot of, uh, there's all these people that are in love with somebody and there's, and, and they're, you know, that person's in love with someone else who's in love with someone else. So it's just like, oh, that's kind of painful, but I like, I like love stories. So that's a good one. So who's, who's the author? It says Marion Zimmer Bradley. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, just because this is a fantasy book, I think maybe some people, Malia, you've got to read this. I think you might like it. And, um, <laughs> and I don't know, would people like a fantasy book about um, King Arthur? <laughs> and, Probably. Um, I think so. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a really long book, but I really like long books. And I hope this book, I hope this book we're reading is long. It is. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> Are you You're going to love this. You're going to absolutely love this book. No. It's going to oh, be really? your favorite book. Here, mom, oh, guess how many awesome. words. Here. <gasps> guess how many words this book is so far. Um, I want to see how I many And it's words not, d- the book's one. not done yet. It's getting closer to the end, but it's not done yet. You can't. Just, wait, the part is the end of this chapter that I've read. Is this close to the end? not even close are you kidding no i'm not kidding no oh, you're, wow no. this is exciting think of all the things that are gonna happen yay yes so <laughs> just just take a guess i mean it, it's gonna be it's gonna be wrong that's fine i don't but, know how many words that's like telling me how many feet is, I, I mean you know tens of thousands um i know that's kind of not an actual number but I'm cheating. Like something you think is really long, I guess, in terms of like a word count for a book. I don't know. Can I now? I gotta Google it. That you guys are cheating. Well, we'll tell What's, you what it is. Oh, but okay. Uh, I, I you know, like, to um, like, like thirty thousand. No, just googling Miss of Avalon word count. It says um, four hundred and thirty nine thousand one hundred and sixty nine words. Right. That's pretty and, damn long. Yeah, I told you I like big books, so I like this one. I was gonna say I thought it was. Guess how than many that. times longer Pale is than the Mists of Avalon? Twice? It can't nope. be much. What? It's more it than can't... three times as long. It's like this big, you guys. Mists of Avalon <laughs> is like this big. It's like two and a half inches. This is like a big textbook. So, in including the extra materials um pale is currently 1,343,739 words long ooh i am going to love it because <laughs> <laughs> no, when you get a good book you don't want it to end you know yeah that's true <laughs> the funny true. thing is too this was supposed to be one of his shorter works but like he what? He, he he's made it longer um He's kept going. He, he kept going. How does he that happen? Enjoyed writing it. Yeah, I'm just like, how do you end if it's so much fun? You keep going, going, but exactly. I don't know. Is he? And he's that, not done yet. Not quite. No. Wow. It seems like we definitely are heading toward the end, but we don't know how much longer exactly it's going to go for. Yeah. Wait. So you guys both read the whole thing, right? Well, again, we it's are, not done yet, but we're at we the are current. We're current. Oh, you didn't read yet. I'm so I'm so confused. So. So we've read as much as been, has been released. 
but there's still more to come because oh, he's still so writing how am it. I do- how am I doing on guesses? So we're not telling you. Come on, so you've read. Me- you've I missed- read. I have to go through and like tabulate all of your specific guesses and put them into a Excel sheet. <laughs> I still haven't done that yet. I'm doing that for me for the other podcast. Um, oh, that's but. Cool. So you've read one arc officially, Mom. He's okay. on arc twelve. Oh man, yikes! We better step it up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I do want to say, I have a really ridiculous card in mind for this one. I mean, I just I can't wait to do it and send it to you girls and see what you think. I just All I'm right. not doing that. I'm not doing that hungry choir. Although, you know. I just got this really neat embossing folder with music notes on it. That would be really cool. <gasps> that could so be So maybe cool. I, I know that could be. So I'll just think, think about, about it. it. I will. All right, well, I will. Speaking of that card, the one that our mom is talking about and is going to send to us um, is going to end up in one of your hands because we're going to give it away. So in order to enter the giveaway, um, you can either comment on the Reddit post for this episode um, or tweet at pale comparison with the hashtag our mom critiques wild though we will enter all the names in a random drawing and send one to the winner okay so thanks for listening if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast please subscribe share it with your friends and leave a rating and review if you'd like to support wild bow go to patreon.com slash wild bow and if you want to support me check out my blog at www.createwithcheryl.me you can also check out Pale in Comparison, a podcast where Malia, Malia uses her knowledge of Pale to guess what happens in Pact, one of Wild Bo's other web serials, and I try to not give anything away. In addition, check out all the other great shows in the Doof Network and support us at patreon.com slash doofmedia. You can follow us on Twitter at Pale Comparison or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail.com. Also be on the lookout for that Reddit post in r slash parahumans where you can share your thoughts on this episode and enter our giveaway. Also, don't forget about Pale Complexions, the fabulous fan art contest that we're currently running. Submissions are due at the end of the month. Yes, it's going to be super sweet. Please submit or pay money to give your opinion. (laughs) Yes, that month is July 2021, by the way. Hello, future listeners. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> All right. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.